Hey there, I'm Barrage. Welcome to Technability. What we have here today is an HTC One running the Google edition of stock Android 4.2.2. So I'm going to start this here from scratch just to show you guys the splash screen and what you're going to get with this specific build. Uh, now mind you, this was a ROM. This is not the actual Google edition phone, but uh, it's pretty much the same exact build, meaning you're going to get the same features. Uh, you're going to get LTE compatibility, which is awesome, I think, in my opinion. Uh, uh, you don't have to flash gaps separately. And look at that boot. Look how quick it booted. You don't have to flash gaps separately like you do with the um, CM10 edition of stock Android. And here we have the lock screen. I'll go ahead and get uh, into this wallpaper in a second. But just to show you guys, you get the widgets, obviously, if you scroll to the left. If you scroll to the right, or if you scroll your finger to the left, you get the... Uh, camera and obviously you can unlock by just doing as such. So this wallpaper I believe is called Sunbeam or Red Beam or something of that nature. Uh, it comes with the build. Uh, yeah, Sunbeam. So there it is right there. You guys can see it. Sunbeam and of course you get Phase Beam. So it's basically a red version of Phase Beam. So just to give you guys an idea what that live wallpaper is. All the other live wallpapers are the same as what you get with any other build. Uh, you know what, I don't know if I like that wallpaper. I don't know if I like any of these stock wallpapers, but it's what they come with, so so be it, I guess, right? Alright, so first thing you're going to notice, obviously, is that it's stock. It's all stock, bone bare, uh, bare bone stock, and with that, you're going to get stock folders, stock widgets, uh, stock dock, you know, I didn't mean for that to rhyme, but the stock dock, uh, the stock app drawer, the widgets, and whatnot. And you can see right off the bat, it's very, very quick. It just loaded up and it's running like a champ. Um, immediate to my touch, uh, you could see obviously there's notification. If I use two fingers, I get the uh, second notification of the quick settings. Uh, I can also get the quick settings by just pushing this right here. Um, now, just to give you guys an idea what these buttons down here do, if I hold the home button, um, actually, you know, let me try that again here. Yeah, if I hold the home button, I'm going to get Google Now, okay? If I double press the home button, I'm going to get my multitasking pane, which I could just swipe away. Uh, back button is basically just back. Uh, there's nothing that you could do in terms of holding it or whatnot. Again, this is not like CM, Cyanogen Mod, where you're going to get a lot of custom uh, customizability. You're not going to get that here, but at the same time, you are going to get a stable and a very fluid stock build. Um, let's just go ahead and first thing first and run a quadrant, because I know you guys love quadrant scores here. Let's go ahead and do that here. All right. Now, LTE compatibility is a reality with this build. Uh, some people have been complaining that CM doesn't give them LTE compatibility. I don't know why. You know, some people say it does. Some people say it doesn't. Some people get the H plus. That's fine. But uh, with this build, you are going to get LTE. So that's really great. Uh, the fact that they added LTE. Uh, we're going to get into a lot of things with this build here today, uh, specifically the camera, because I know a lot of people are wondering how the camera functions without all the bells and whistles that you get with Sense. So we'll check that out in about a minute. Let's just go ahead and get this quadrant score right here. All right, let that DNA strand go round and round. Okay, push yes. All right, and we got a score of 12,308. That's beautiful. Compared to CM10 stock Android, which was about a 6,000, or at least that's what I got, 12,000 is comparable to what you get with the Sense 5 build of 4.2.2. So very similar. Um, that's great. Let's do a speed test. I don't think I'm on LTE. I got five bars of HSPA+. Plus. But again, my data here is so shoddy that even though it tells you that I have LTE or HSPA+, Plus, the speeds don't reflect that. So let's see what happens here. Yeah, you know, that's more of 3G speeds. But again, that's the data network. I mean, it is what it is. Uh, it, the bad thing about bad thing about my phones is that my office I have bad uh, service. At my home I have bad service. It's like people call me and they're like, "Hey, we can never reach you." I'm like it's not my fault. I've got bad service. Two most important places, you know, my house and my office. So obviously you get these custom uh, stock widgets, and you can uh, go ahead and go through these widgets by just going to the widgets tab here in the app drawer. Uh, they're basically the same as what you're going to get with any other stock build or custom stock ROM. Um, the only, the, the thing is here, and I can tell you guys this right off because I know this is important. To me, at least, it's important. The smoothness, fluidity, and the uh, stability of this ROM is fantastic. I mean, it's absolutely a screamer and a treat to use. Blazing fast, blazing fast. I use that term when I described CM10 like a year ago. 
I did a, a video on a titled CM10 is blazing fast. Now this stock build is blazing fast. Everything. You, I mean, just look at that. You guys can see. It's very uh, responsive to the touch. If I click on something, responsive immediately. Or responses immediately. All right. Okay. I like showing this off because it just goes to show you the potential of these devices. Just entering and exiting apps immediately, right? That's what it's all about. And if I double click, I can just swipe them away. Now, Signage and Mod ROM gives you the option to just eliminate them all right up here. You don't get that with this, but that's okay. Okay. I'm just swiping them all away. If I take this widget and I want to put it here, it'll move it for me. It'll move the icons for me. I can put it back. If I want to take this icon and create a folder, I can do as such. I can name the folder, etc., etc. I can even create a folder in the dock here. You can see right there, created a folder. Let's take that back out and look at Chrome for a second. So Chrome, obviously you got the Chrome tabs here. Uh, nothing new. Everyone knows about the Chrome tabs. You can swipe them away if you don't want them. Load a website here. Let's just go to Google. Fugal. I was about to put Fugal. Goo, there you go. All right, well, there you go, goo. And super responsive, super responsive pinch zoom. Um, you can pan around the screen as you're zooming. Scroll up, scroll down. Very fast. Uh, YouTube, obviously, I don't think I'm signed in because I just built this wrong, but YouTube is YouTube. All right, so we're going to go ahead and look at the camera now. Important feature. All right, now, people are probably wondering, is the quality as good as what you're going to get with Sense 5? Right off the bat, I'll tell you, it's not as good as you're going to get with the Sense 5 build because of all the customizations they have in their camera, but it's definitely better than the CM build. I could just tell you that right off the bat. The quality is definitely better than the CM build. The color saturation, the contrast, the clarity, the autofocus, it just looks a little bit more. And look at that. It's different too. See how the uh, tabs here are different than what you get with the uh, Cyanogen mod build? You can see the front-facing camera, super clear. Of course, the front-facing camera is going to be the same because uh, the megapixels are the same regardless of whether you have Sense 5 or not. But the back camera is a 4 megapixel or ultra pixel. And the thing is, is that the ca the software that you get with the HC1 um, utilizes is utilized uh, when you're using the 4 megapixel camera. So you, obviously, you're not going to get that here. But if we could just go ahead and take a picture of, let's say. My car's rim. Okay. Super fast. Just to show you. You know. It keeps taking it even if I'm done. Swiping over will get you the picture that you just took. Pinching, uh, pinching in will minimize the picture. Swiping up will delete it. P clicking right there will undo it. I didn't undo that, but you can see I can just swipe them away if I don't want them. Okay, you want to see the quality of these pictures. Uh, quality is not really that bad. Uh, it's not as obviously when you zoom in or when you crop a certain percentage, it's not as clear, but it's really not that bad either. Again, I will say that it's not as good as the Sense camera, at least from my initial um, take. But with that said, it, it's solid. It's good. It's good enough as a daily u user. If you're just someone who goes and randomly takes pictures here and there, isn't crazy about your camera phone. Uh, this is what you're going to get. You're going to get kind of a chopped down version of the Sense 5 camera. Because you have to remember, guys, it's 4 megapixel. Ultra pixel or not, it's 4. So cropping pictures, 100% crop, zooming in, you're not going to get the clarity that you get with the higher megapixel uh, cameras. So with that said, let's go ahead and look at some games. We got Temple Run 2 here. Show you how games run. And when you have a quadrant score of 12,000, you know the games are going to run fine. I mean, it's a quad core processor. Uh, 8, 1080, 1080p display, 468 pixels per inch. You're talking about 1.7 gigahertz quad core uh, Snapdragon 600 with 2 gigs of RAM. Uh, this thing is a screamer. Regardless of what you have in installed on it, this thing is going to run like a champ. But let's just go ahead and play some Temple Run here. Get the little trying to go here. So let's tempo run, let's exit out of this. Immediate to exit, double tap, and close it out. So, 
Oh, there's auto rotation on multitask. Okay, so auto rotation works fine. Let's go ahead and test out the GPS here. Okay, so let's say we're going from Glendale to Burbank, Popwell Airport. There we go. Okay. All right, let's go ahead and navigate. Accept. Okay. Turn on GPS. All right, let's see how quick this locks in. There you go. Locked in right away. So the GPS works fine, locks in immediately. Head west. Gives you your direction. So let's go ahead and exit out of that. Actually, exit navigation here. Okay. Now let's go ahead and test out some Google now. Tell me the weather. It's 87 degrees and clear in Glendale. Set reminder 6 p.m. Need to go to doctor. Reminder was set, so Google Now. Obviously, you guys know the details of Google Now, so I'm not going to get too deep into that as well. But here we go with the text messages. All right, so let's go ahead and look at the keyboard here. Super responsive. Autocorrect is still, in my opinion, tops in the game. I can't even spell today. I'm spelling tofu. There we go today. It's just super responsive. I love that noise. Okay, so keyboard super responsive. Now let's go ahead and try out the voice. Hey buddy, how are you? Do you want to go hang out today? Let's go figure out what to do. It's Saturday and it's really hot outside. I don't know if I want to go to the beach because we're going to burn to death. And I don't know if I'm really feeling coming home burned. So let me know what you want to do. And look how responsive this is. Everything that I'm saying, it's typing immediately. Let's see how fast I can go. Let's see how fast it can type. I don't know if it could fa type this fast, but hey, we're trying it anyway. Ah, did it get stuck? Ah, I put a bad word. All right, we pretty much got stuck there, but I was talking super duper fast. But it's still going as I'm talking, which is really, really funny. But it's still, I think, again, in my opinion, the best voice um, to text system that you're going to get in the world today. Uh, super responsive, utilizes Google now, obviously. So we like that, we like that a lot. Uh, obviously you got Hangouts, you got your contacts, Play Store, you know, this regular uh, stock dialer, which is, again, my favorite dialer. I'm a big fan of stock Android. I've always been a big fan of, oh, see, just to show you guys, actually cut myself off there. Show you guys this, LTE. So you do get LTE compatibility. This is on T-Mobile's network. So LTE compatibility is a reality with this build. There's some give and takes, I suppose, but with that said, I think the gives are a lot more than the takes. Uh, it's a very clean ROM. Um, I'm going to settings here and see if there's many custom, not many customizations, guys. Uh, you got to keep that in mind right off the bat. Not many customizations, but um, let's see, lock screen, you get the lock screen, face unlock and whatnot. So there's certain features that you get, but you're not going to be... Uh, you're not going to be flooded with features like you're going to get on custom ROMs. Let's see if I can make myself a developer here. There we go. I'm a developer now. So, there's the developer options, accessibility, date, time, all the regular uh, bells and whistles that you're going to get with the settings. Uh, one thing I do wish is I wish that they would allow us to customize these uh, icons and the, the, the grid size basically to make it five, row, uh, five icons on each row. Uh, it fits the screen a little bit better because when you have four and they're so small on Android on 1080p screens or the higher resolution screens that you have, the icons tend to get smaller. So it'd be nice to have that, but no big deal. No big deal. All right, let's see what else here. Everything else has basically been covered to death. I mean, you guys know all about this. This build of stock Android 4.2. Uh, there's been some leaks of 4.3. I saw it on Android Central. Uh, there's a few leaks on the S4, uh, 4.3. Uh, you know, not too different the, from 4.2, but with every uh, incremental update, they do release fixes and other internal uh, things that basically make the phone a little bit faster, a little bit better to use, a little bit more stable. And I do think 4.2 is pretty stable, but every time I feel like, wow, Android's really done a good job and upped it a notch, they 
usually take it to the next level. So I'm really excited to see what 4.3 uh, brings. As soon as there's a beta build or some sort of alpha build, even if it's an unstable build of 4.3, I'm going to flash it. Uh, I'm going to do a very in-depth video on it. I don't care if it's an alpha beta or whatnot. If it's the latest and greatest, I need to have it. I know you guys want to see it. So with that said, I wanted to go ahead and showcase this right here. Android 4.2.2, uh, the Google edition running on an HTC One, clearly. This is what you're gonna get, guys. Is it worth flashing? Absolutely, I think it's worth flashing. It's a very easy flash too, because there's nothing, there, there's no gaps involved. It's basically just install the ROM uh, after obviously you've gone through the process of rooting and unlocking the bootloader. Flash the ROM, clear your cache, clear, etc., and you've basically got this build installed. Again, is it worth installing? Yes, I do think it's worth installing. It's a really good build, in my opinion. It's stable, super duper stable. I haven't really tested battery life yet, but we're going to see. And uh, for those of you who are wondering how battery life is, once I have a day or two of use, I'll let you guys know how the battery life is. Uh, you can see again my LTE network, I only have two bars, getting about four to five megabytes. Let's see what I get on the uploads, just for the heck of it, right? One bar of LTE. Well, you know, if you look at it this way, one bar of LT is getting me about five megs, about three megs up. So I'm assuming if you had four bars, you can at least triple that minimum. So I would have about 15 megabytes down and maybe about 10 megabytes up, which is solid. Again, not Verizon LTE speeds or even AT&T LTE speeds for that matter, but T-Mobile in LA is fairly new. So we're still getting a custom with that, but still good enough. Right, you can see the little lock screen thing. All right, there you guys go. Uh, Google Edition, <clears throat> Android Stock Jelly Bean 4.2.2 for the HTC One. If you guys want to know how or where to install this, I'll post a link below. Thank you guys for watching Technability. Don't forget to subscribe. Some cool contests. Other than that, have a good weekend.